it's here. I'm so stoked. Hello friends and welcome back to another video here on the sleeper channel um, so I am so pumped right now man I've been waiting for this day for a long time it's been my dream to do an STI swap on a WRX to do it just for the experience and to completely just transform a car like that I just think would be really cool so obviously as you can see uh, today I got my drivetrain package delivered from JDM Racing Motors. If you're looking for JDM parts and uh, you're not sure who to order from, uh, this is like the third order I've made through them and those guys are awesome. Super helpful, uh, really honest people and uh, now the good news is that they have moved their uh, warehouse down to the US. They're now in Connecticut instead of Montreal. So shipping is a little bit more affordable. So, um, I know that you can just buy an STI, I get it. Um, but good luck finding an STI uh, that has uh, less than 60,000 miles on it uh, for the cost that you can get this whole package for. No way in hell are you gonna be able to do that. Uh, obviously this is a STI six speed transmission uh, straight from Japan. So it came with the six speed, came with the uh, shifter linkage, um, came with the drive shaft, uh, the clutch, flywheel, and pressure plate, um, the Brembos, of course. And what's really awesome about these hubs is they are five by 114.3, baby. So I am so stoked to upgrade from the five by 100s. Of course, that means we have to get a new set of wheels, but that's a price I'm willing to pay to have five by 114. Uh, came with these really cool STI um, stainless steel braided lines. Um, these are apparently factory that you could get as a as an option for your STI over in Japan. They have this really nice uh, casing over the top, so you can't really feel the like braided part. Um, so that's really cool. Both subframes, front and rear. Uh, I'm really stoked to have this subframe because the bushings on these STI subframes are badass. They're like, they're like, uh, a type of metal, they're not like rubber, so they just don't wear out and it stiffens everything up. R180 rear diff, again, really excited to have that. Thing is super beefy. Rear, like lateral arms or control arms, whatever you wanna call them. Sway bar, uh, the front axles, rear axles, um, the really these really cool pink uh, STI uh, rear trailing arms. Those are pretty neat, I've never seen this like pink option before. So kind of cool to have these like unique JDM parts that we never got over here. And the STI uh, aluminum front control arms. Um, those are really cool. Those are a lot more lightweight than the uh, uh, steel ones that come on the WRX stock. Also, one thing that they hooked it up for that they threw in was this piece. So let me unwrap this and show you what I have here. There it is. Version eight, WX STI gauge cluster. 
I'm so stoked to have that. Yeah, they threw this in uh, free of charge. So that is my big update uh, for this video. I'm not really gonna be working on this stuff today. I will probably start kind of disassembling things because a lot of these parts I wanna clean up and like refinish like the sway bars and um, I do want to put like some uh, aluminum like brightener on those front control arms and just get everything super cleaned up and make sure that there's no like exposed rust on anything. Um, if there is, I'll probably treat it with something and then coat it with like paint or something like that to make sure that it won't rust. Obviously, this is a huge project, so um, I need to finish all of the um, paint work that I'm still working on, all these pieces here that uh, you saw me working on in the last video. Um, my next step for that stuff is to wet sand it all, um, get it all smoothed out, and get it ready to lay down base and clear. Once I do that stuff, then I'm gonna move on to actually working on the car again, which I'm pretty excited for. Like, I love paint work, and this body work's been awesome because it's been a great learning experience for me, to be honest with you. Um, and I have been learning a ton through doing this, and you know, I think these are great skills. So, um, yeah, it's good to have. but. I am getting a little bit tired of doing the paint and body work. I mean, I still enjoy it, but I like working on cars and wrenching on cars a lot more than I like painting them, to be totally honest with you. Um, this is just a skill that I've always wanted because I want to be able to do everything to my own car. So it's just kind of my, my uh, end goal there with it. But yeah, so once I get all the paint sorted out, then I'm going to pull the car back in the garage. We're going to get it put back up on the jack stands and I'm pretty much just gonna be tearing that thing apart again. Uh, like I said before, that's just what kinda needs to happen in order to do this. So we're gonna be pulling the engine, we're gonna pull the entire drivetrain, strip it all down. I may do some work to the undercarriage of the car, but for now, for today, for this video, I'm gonna jump into getting these parts wet sanded and smoothed out and ready to lay down the base and clear. I have finished up wet sanding the doors. So now I am just going to move on to this hood. So I finished wet sanding all of the parts yesterday um, and then I was just roasted. So I just stopped for the day and then today I went through and cleaned everything up really well. And I got the uh, paint booth all set up, cleaned the floor really well. So everything's looking real nice. Um, hung everything back in place and set it up in such a way that I'm confident I'll be able to get to every part that needs to get painted. Hood's right here. Overall, the uh, wet sanding went pretty well. There's some like weird spots where I slightly burnt through in some areas, but I'm not gonna sweat it. I think it will be just fine. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm pretty close to being ready to start spraying these with base. The only thing I have left to do is to hit these with a tack rag and then wet the floor, uh, gear up in my PPE, mix up my paint and start spraying. All right, so I have some of this 51E, the Aspen White, uh, that's ready to spray that I got from the paint mart last time um, According to those guys as long as it was sealed it should still be pretty good to use Well, not pretty good, but it should be fine to use um, and The guy over there that always mixes my paint for me told me that I should just open it up and look at it Give it a stir and I'll know if it's bad. So 
I'm going to start with this. I'd like to just use all of this if it's still good because there's quite a bit of paint in here. Um, and you know, paint isn't that cheap. So yeah, I'm just gonna mix this up, pop the lid. We'll take a look at it and uh, see if it looks like we should use it. I don't feel any clumps. It does look pretty good. I'm gonna go for it. Just gonna go straight into the gun with it. Did about uh, three three coats of base. Is what it's looking like now. It's been about 30 to 45 minutes that I've been letting it flash off. So I'm gonna mix up some clear and I'm gonna lay down the first cut of clear coat. I didn't get any orange peel at the base, so I'm hoping that I can dial in my gun and uh, we can make it look super flat with uh, very little orange peel. So we'll see what happens. Clear coat is the hardest part, so. All right, so I finished laying down the clear. I did not film any of that because um, I noticed that there was some overspray from the base coat on my camera, uh, just like a dusting, so it wiped right off, but um, I was a little worried about that with the clear. I just do not want to ruin this thing. It's a, a really nice camera, so um, didn't show myself shooting any of the clear, but I did finish the clear. Uh, wow, my hair looks crazy right now just from being in the suit. Um, anyway, I also had to change my shirt because I was literally drenched in sweat. It went pretty well. Uh, I, there are a couple mistakes that I made. Uh, and so I'll just walk you through and I'll kind of point out what I'm talking about. So I tried really hard to um, increase the uh, air pressure um, and the amount of volume that was coming out of the gun so that it would lay down more like glass. Um, so as you can see on some of these parts, like it looks really, really nice. Um, and you know, like this gas lid, like I don't need to buff and polish that at all. Like that thing looks so damn good. It's like a mirror finish hood scoop as well. However, after my first coat, um, I don't know how well you can see it, but right here, there was like this little piece of wood, like a tiny little wood chip that I don't know where it came from, like fell out of the sky and landed right on there. And I just wasn't willing to leave it because I figured if I clear coated over that thing, it would be way harder to get it off. So I had to wipe it out and I smudged it and it smudged through the base underneath. And so that's what it looks like now. So there's a little imperfection. I'm gonna have to just sand that off and touch it up with some paint. But it does look really damn good otherwise. 
The doors look so freaking nice. Um, I am pretty damn happy with how they turned out. I mean, it's like a it's like a mirror finish. I don't know how well you'll be able to see like a reflection, um, just because the light's kind of weird in here. But man, they look so good. Like again, like I don't think I'll have to buff and polish either door. Um, by the way, this is the door that I did the body work on, so you can see what it looks like now. Um, that's with it all finished up. It's not perfect. Um, I can tell that there's been body work done on it. I don't know that someone else would necessarily notice, but perhaps, you know, I mean, if you're someone that knows these cars really well, you will think that something's a little off with this door. That's okay. Um, here's the other one that didn't need any body work. Obviously the line is definitely a bit sharper. So that is, is pretty obvious to me when you look at this door and then you come over and look at this door, but overall, you know, for a first time job, I, you know, I'm not complaining. I think it'll work just fine. Um, the hood, the hood is really good overall. Um, somehow, I don't even know how this happened, but this is where, this is where the mistakes that I made are a little bit worse. So I don't know if you can see it, but there's a drip right there. There's a big ass drip right here. And there's one that goes down here. I don't know what the hell happened. Um, in addition to that, there's a really small one right there. Just like two little, um, two little like drip marks right there on the edge. Um, not sure how that happens. I'm sure that drips are a little easier to happen when you have stuff hanging like this because it's, you know, it can like slide down the surface rather than when it's just laying flat, like horizontal on the table. It can probably just flow out a little bit better without causing drip marks, I would imagine, but I don't know if that's really true. That's just like my intuition. So I'm a little bit bummed about that. I was honestly considering maybe razor blading the drip marks off down to where they're flat and then wet sanding the entire hood with like 600 grit and then clearing it one more time. Because I have seen people doing that and they call it like a flow coat, I think, which makes it look like more of like that factory finish. Not, not like take the base off, but like sand it to where it all looks flat and not shiny anymore. The backs of the hood as well um, turned out really nice. I did put some clear over the base um, just because, you know, I want it to look nice when I pop the hood. I did do a little bit of clear on the backs of the doors. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe some of you think that's a waste of, uh, of clear, but I did have extra in the gun and so I just decided to use it. And, you know, I think it's probably better that way. Anyways, just wanted to do it right. But yeah, all the jams look good. Everything looks pretty damn good. So I am really happy with how it turned out. Obviously there are some mistakes. But what do you expect when you don't have a legit paint booth? And I know I should probably get one at this point, um, especially with the rest of the project that I have coming up on the car when I put those rear quarter panels on. Um, so yeah, it would be nice to have a paint booth and I've thought about getting one of those inflatable ones because I could just put it in the back there. Like our patio area would definitely have plenty of space for one of those, but they're freaking expensive, man. Like you're gonna spend at least a grand on one of those things to be able to put a car inside of it. So I just don't know. I've been trying to just make do with what I got because once I paint this car, like I'm not gonna be painting another car for probably a, a while. Like, uh, yeah, there are some mistakes. It's inevitable when you paint in your garage at home like this, um, but overall, I can't really complain. I think it looks damn good. And I think it's gonna take this car to a whole nother level. I wanted to install the hood and the hood scoop on the car in this video, but I just don't have time to do that. And I wanna let these uh, parts um, cure for several days before I do that. So that will happen in the next video. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Please think about subscribing if you want to see more uh, progress happen on this build. Um, now that I have all of this stuff done, I'm going to start tearing down the car here pretty soon so that we can start working on the STI drivetrain swap. Um, so yeah, anyway, thanks for joining and until next time, peace out everyone.